Now, in, since the uh, events of uh, last night, there have been rumours that uh, the Labour Party and Sir Keir Starmer in particular put pressure on Sir Lindsay Hoyle to allow that Labour amendment to the SNP motion calling for a ceasefire. The Labour leader has categorically denied threatening the Speaker. And in the last few minutes, he has uh, been speaking to the news media. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. It's very important to put the debate last night into its context. Last weekend, I was at the Munich Security Conference talking to world leaders um, about the plan, hopefully, to bring an end to the awful situation in Gaza, where far, far too many people have died. I drafted a Labour amendment, which not only dealt with how we stop the fighting now and get aid in, but also about what the long-term plan is to inv uh, make sure that we get to uh, a peaceful outcome. Uh, I wanted that amendment put before Parliament because I wanted to ensure it was a good uh, debate that we had the widest possible options and of course there were discussions with the speaker but many you know all party leaders speak to the uh, 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 speak to the speaker um, but uh, there was absolutely no threat to the speaker uh, uh, in the course of that what he wanted to do was to ensure that parliament had the broadest possible debate on an issue which is really very very important can you categorically say then that no Labour MP warned Lindsay Hoyle that he could lose Labour's support to continue as Speaker after the election if he didn't select that amendment? I was very concerned that the debate yesterday should be elevated. It's a very important issue. That is probably the most important issue globally at the moment, the conflict in Gaza and how we bring an end to the terrible situation. But the specific so, question is... So on... I wanted that amendment heard. Of course, I had conversations with the Speaker. All political leaders had conversations what with the speaker. Did you put on the speaker. I simply urged the Speaker to ensure that the debate could be as broad as possible and that MPs could vote for the proposition that they believed in. We're talking here about whether there was one amendment or two amendments on the uh, before Parliament. See, the real you... issue, the real issue. Uh, is to have that proper debate um, and that didn't happen because the SNP walked off because all they were interested in doing was dividing the Labour Party and once they saw they couldn't do that they walked off and the government then walked off the government of the country walked out of a debate on Gaza because they thought they were going to lose a vote I think uh, that we should have continued with that debate had it at the right level and for Parliament to be able to speak on one of the most important issues of the day. Can you say that you and your Labour MPs categorically didn't put that pressure on the Speaker, didn't threaten to withdraw your support for him after the election? Can you just say that yes or no? I can categorically tell you that I did not threaten the Speaker in any way whatsoever. I simply urged him to ensure that we had the broadest possible debate... And your MPs? The broadest possible debate um, so that actually the most important thing, which is what do we do about the awful situation in Gaza, could be properly discussed by MPs with a number of options in front of them. That's the right thing to do. The Speaker did the right thing in making sure the debate was broad, but the tragedy is the SNP walked off the pitch because they wanted to divide the Labour Party and they couldn't, and the government walked off the pitch because it thought it was going to lose a vote. So we had one party that was simply seeking to divide on an important issue, the government has lost control of its own MPs and couldn't control the vote. We should have had a proper debate and a proper resolution with all three propositions being put to a vote. Isn't what really happened is you were under massive pressure within your party to shift your position on a Gaza ceasefire and if you hadn't secured that vote on that amendment you'd have faced the biggest rebellion of your leadership. The proposition I put on the table in that amendment was crafted by me after I came back from the Munich Security Conference, having spoken to Secretary of State Blinken, having spoken to the Prime Minister of Qatar, having spoken to the President of Israel, i.e. having spoken to the people who are actually involved in trying to wait for this awful conflict. I wanted that proposition heard and voted on, and my MPs wanted to vote on it. Happily, it was carried last night, uh, and that's the right thing, but my focus is on what we need to do to resolve the awful situation going on in Gaza.
Neighbourhood Sir Keir Starmer explaining what he did and uh, apparently didn't say to the uh, Speaker of the House of Commons, Sir Lindsay Hall, saying he just wanted to a debate as broad as possible. We'll interrogate some of what Sir Keir Starmer had to say uh, as soon as we get the chance to. Um, and we have our political editor, Beth Rigby, who can do that for us. Uh, Elliot Wilson, I apologise, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to you uh, later on this afternoon if we can. Our political editor, Beth Rigby, has been listening to what was being said by Sir Keir. And, and Beth, it's great to have you with us. Look, he said there, he simply urged debate to be as broad as possible. Very similar words to what Sir Lindsay Hall said yesterday, yes. but it doesn't yes. really get them out of the hole that they still no. broke the precedent. Um, OK, yes. Um, Kamali, but I have to say, I've got some breaking news here because I have Stephen Flynn, uh, the SNP Westminster leader, with me. Um, Stephen, uh, you've been asking for a meeting with the Speaker. You said it was a stitch-up last night. You seem to be on the verge of calling him for Lindsay Hoyle to quit. Have you seen him and what happened? Yes, so I sought out the Speaker this morning uh, and I had a meeting with him just uh, a wee while ago. And I've just followed that up with a statement in the chamber there uh, where I've said that Lindsay Hoyle no longer retains the confidence of SNP MPs to continue in his role. I have grave concerns about the decision that was taken yesterday to turn an, an SNP opposition day into a Labour opposition day. And from my perspective, I have massive, even bigger concerns about the fact that Sir Keir Starmer met with Lindsay Hoyle prior and privately to that decision being made. What did uh, Sir Lindsay Hoyle uh, say to you? You'd said uh, that you wanted uh, a full disclosure about those meetings. He didn't reassure you. What, 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 what did he say to you? I think it would be unfair for me to talk about a private conversation that I've had with Lindsay Hoyle himself. But all I can say, and I think this is an important point, is that my concerns about the stitch-up yesterday remain. The reality is that Lindsay Hoyle met with Sir Keir Starmer and the Labour Chief Whip prior to making a decision which was politically partisan yesterday. To be very clear, the third largest party in Westminster, the SNP, are now formally calling for Sir Lindsay Hoyle to step down as the Speaker. You think his position is untenable? I, I absolutely do think that Lindsay Hoyle's position is untenable. And I wish we weren't in this position. I have a lot of respect for Lindsay. But ultimately, he made a decision yesterday which was politically partisan and he cannot continue in his role as a neutral, neutral chair of the House of Commons. Ultimately, his decision benefited Sir Keir Starmer and there's huge questions to be asked about what was said between Sir Keir Starmer and Lindsay Hoyle that made him change his mind. Did the Speaker not make the point to you that he made in the chamber that he did this in good faith? I presume he apologised to you. He was trying to allow all three parties to vote on amendments in what is a very divisive issue. Can you not give him the benefit of the doubt? So I'm still deeply frustrated about the fact that yesterday descended into farce because we have been speaking for months, months about the need for a ceasefire in Gaza. We finally got to a position where the Labour Party were in agreement with us. Yes, Sir Lindsay Hoyle... You, you got what you wanted. I mean, the, the, the Chamber voted for an immediate ceasefire, which is exactly what the SNP wanted. So what's the problem? Because of the fact that, yes, the Labour amendment went through, and I was supportive of that, a Labour amendment, but our motion, which referred, and this is an important point, to the collective punishment of the Palestinian people denying them food, water, electricity, medicine, shooting them, bombing them, the collective punishment was not able to be voted upon. And that was a political decision that was taken, and I believe it was taken by the Speaker of the House of Commons following a discussion with Sir Keir Starmer. Was it not taken by the Conservative Party for pulling uh, the votes? Was it not taken by the Conservative Party? You could have had all the three votes, but the Conservative Party decided not to participate. The only reason we were in this mess was because Sir Keir Starmer met with Lindsay Hoyle yesterday. Lindsay Hoyle chose to ignore the rules of Parliament, and as such, the SNP on our own opposition day were denied the ability to vote on whether there's collective punishment of the Palestinians. Stephen Fly, I understand how strongly you feel about it. Let, let's go back to the Speaker. You are now formally uh, withdrawing support. Can he stay on? or do you think his, he has to go? 
given that we're the third party in Westminster and we do no longer retain confidence in Lindsay to make decisions which are not political in their nature, I don't believe he can continue in his role. And just finally, um, what do you say to people that say, as I asked you last night, that you are playing politics, that you have tabled this amendment to try and put uh, Labour on the wrong side of this argument over the ceasefire so you can go back to Scotland and tell Scottish voters Labour oppose a ceasefire? That's what you wanted in this Opposition Day motion and you didn't get it and you've thrown your toys out of the pram. What do you say to people that might put that to you? I have been consistent in my view in relation to the collective punishment of the Palestinian people for months. In November, I forced a vote in the House of Commons on this very matter. The First Minister of Scotland, my party leader's family, were trapped in Gaza and experienced this firsthand. I'm actually quite frustrated when people say that I'm playing politics. In actual fact, what we, what we achieved yesterday was we got the Labour Party to shift its position and I was delighted at that and I've been celebrating that. So the fact the big, that they, In the big picture, in, in the big there was progress here. In the, in the big picture, there was absolutely prog in progress. We had more people agreeing we need to have an immediate just, ceasefire. I, I'm going to get knocked off air in a moment. Just final question. If the majority of MPs do still battle Lindsay Hoyle and the Conservatives and Labour don't fall in behind you, he stays, right? Yeah, that's, it's, it's up to Parliament to decide. Um, but I think it's impor important that Parliament has its say. It's going to be for the government to, to, to determine whether that happens, but my views are clear. OK, Stephen Flynn, thank you so much for talking to us on Sky News. So there you have it, formally, the SNP have withdrawn support from the Speaker of the House of Commons now. We're waiting to see what happens with the Conservative and the Labour Party, who I think are still supportive. Stay with us. We'll have more after the break.